turn on the Skype. Okay. Quinn? Yes. Hello, Quinn. This is Ron. Hey, Ron. Great to hear from you. <laughs> Thanks for being on our program today. Yeah, it's an honor. We'll be mm -hmm. starting here. Mm -hmm. We'll be starting in a second, right? All right. Uh, Quinn, uh, were the officers all uh, Texas? Were there any federal officials involved? There was not any federal officials, no. It was state. State. No, they were city. It's a, it's a mentality, it's a federal mentality that we're dealing with these days <laughs> on, on how they treat us. Yeah. So you, uh, are you in Arlington now? Yes, I am. Live from the Garden of Eden. <laughs> We've got plants and internet. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can just start with, and here he is now, Quinn Aker. Okay. Are you ready, guys? Good speed. Uh, okay. Welcome to our program. Quinn Aker, I'm delighted you're with us today. I'm grateful to be here, Ron. Did, uh, did you put a hold? What's that? Did you put a hold? Just for one second. Are you ready now? I, I, do I do it, redo it? Yes, please. Okay, sorry about we'll start, that. We'll start right from the top. Okay, here we go, L.A. Welcome to the show, Gwen. Uh, it's a delight to have you with us. Thank you, Ron. It's great to be here. Good. It's um, rather serious business when uh, the police feel like they need a SWAT team to rob you of your blueberries, but... Uh, I guess that's the kind of society we live in. You know, for some reason, I'm not feeling any safer uh, because they've uh, taken these products from you, these very, very dangerous plants and things that uh, they came and confiscated. But uh, I guess we both might feel endangered because of the process. But uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about this. Uh, start off with telling me, how long have you been in this business? Is this something brand new or have you been doing this for a while? Well, you know, we've been doing it uh, for what I consider a while. Um, I've been here seven years, and we've been very consciously cultivating a sustainable life uh, for many of these years. And every single year, we're more sustainable than we were the year before, we're more successful than we were before, and we help more people than we did the year before. Well, that, that, that is... Uh Wonderful. Were you were you pretty shocked when they came? Did you have fair warning? Have they been coming around, uh, tipping you off? Did they? Uh, how did that come about? Did they flash a search warrant out uh, as they knocked on your door? Oh, there was no knocking. Uh, there was just uh, you know being woken up with a loaded gun in your face. Wow. They did this in the middle of the night. No, it was in the early morning. Uh -huh. And. Uh, what, did, did they show you a search warrant? They, uh, they did eventually. Uh, you know, they secured the premises, uh, which took them quite some time. You know, we didn't feel secure. And uh, they wound up showing us the warrant about an hour and a half after, uh, after the fact. And, you know, we'd been held in handcuffs and at gunpoint uh, for all of that time. You know, we demanded to see a warrant as soon as, as, soon as we were handcuffed and all detained, uh, but they wouldn't show it. They wouldn't answer any questions. None of the officers would identify themselves. None of them, you know, said what their official capacities were. Nothing. And what kind of recourse do you have? Any at all? Are you pursuing any recourse, or how is this going to be handled? We are pursuing recourse. Uh, number one it's really important that, you know, the people realize that, you know, while this is, uh, you know, maybe not an everyday thing, uh, this type of thing is actually not that uncommon, unfortunately. And the more research you do on that, the more truth to that you'll find out. And, um, you know, secondly, you know, we the people are the power. We the people are the power. All the power is in we the people. And so we the people are also the problem. So we the people can be the solution. Uh, but we will also follow, we will follow through with, uh, with legal action as well. 
Now, do you think their main motivation was to uh, come in and find some drugs and really throw the book at you? Uh, or do you think they were worried about the blueberries and the okra? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit of a, a long story as far as my perception goes on that. Uh, you know, they've been, uh, they've been sort of trying to shut us down for a while now, and we've used the law, we've used the due process of law to, you know, claim and enforce our rights, which is to, you know, uh, provide for our family, our pursuit of happiness, uh, our spiritual path, and they couldn't do anything about it, and so they've been trying really hard to find some justification to put their boots and to put their weapons on our land, you know, and really sort of say, yeah, we can do whatever we want to do. And, uh, you know, obviously they were wrong, but they got some sort of information, some sort of intel. You know, they jumped the gun. They were really hoping that they'd be able to really destroy us with this, you know, justified cause. Uh, but they were wrong, and they failed. So really, ultimately, they wound up just cutting down our okra, our blackberries, you know, our tomatillos, and, you know, things of that nature. Did, did they do damage to the property? Yeah, they did damage Other to the... Other than taking your plants? <laughs> yeah, not only did they destroy um, our plants, but they also stole a lot of our uh, materials. Uh, you know, we live a highly sustainable life, not just in the sense that we grow our own food, but, you know, we build structures out of, you know, salvaged materials. We... Everything that we do is out of salvaged materials, so... Um, you know, we're constantly storing. We've just got tons and tons of materials that we're storing and we're using for different purposes through different parts of the year for different reasons. And, you know, so we've got a lot of stuff, uh, but it's all valuable and we use it. And they, you know, they took, I think it was 4,000 pounds of our stuff, um, you know, with trailers and, you know, full-on crews and... You know, they just they just confiscated it all based on you know fire hazard and you know code violation stuff. Well, you know, we talk about the property and what they did to it, but you know, the big loss that I see with uh, episodes like this, and they're more numerous uh, than ever. The SWAT teams are everywhere these days. Thousands of times uh, a year, this happens. But, you know, our biggest loss is our loss of our liberties, the fact that they do come in with a, a casualness and, and most of the time unapologetically and so often there's no, uh, you know, compensation for this. So that to me is uh, the, the biggest threat. I mean, not only is it something like uh, what you had to put up with, but it's, you know, breaking into places on farms that might sell raw milk uh, and other people breaking into the wrong houses. Uh, they think they have drugs. And actually, people get killed over these uh, SWAT team operation. So that, I think, is the most valuable thing that we're losing. So it's a real tragedy, I think, when you suffer this consequence and hopefully you can do whatever to try to 